Hi there, and welcome to another pencast, or rather video, for the course Algorithms and Data Structures. In this video, we're going to take a look at the notion of time complexity, or rather, we're going to introduce the topic. So without further ado, let's consider two pieces of code here. One is written in Java, and one is written in Python. Depending on what kind of student you are, either a computer scientist or a mathematician, you might find one easier to read than the other. Now, in previous courses, the main question you would ask about pieces of code like this is, what does it do? Well, take a second and see if you can figure it out. Hopefully, you've realized that this code adds all the numbers from 0 to n minus 1. Now, what I do want to ask in this video is, how fast is this code? rather than what does it do? But before we answer that question, let's introduce a new way of writing code, one that computer scientists, mathematicians, and everybody else can also understand. We call this way of writing code pseudocode. It's code that's not really written in any specific programming language, but uses concepts that many programming languages share. So we have our function, we'll call it foo. It has this variable called s. We add all the numbers from 0 to n minus 1. And then we return that sum. Now let's see if we can answer the question of how fast this code is. Unfortunately, the answer is going to be, it depends, an answer you often hear in computer science. Because you see, if I run this code on my laptop, it might take only a tenth of a second to run. Don't pin me to these numbers, I haven't actually tried them. If I take the laptop I used when I was a student, it's eight years old now, it might run in 0.3 seconds. My switch might require roughly the same amount of time. My Raspberry Pis, well, it depends on the model, right? Could be 0.8 for the oldest model or 0.4 seconds for the newest one. My old calculator, my Arduinos or my N64, they might all require different amounts of time too. So it seems a measure of time in seconds isn't really the answer we're looking for. It doesn't really tell us how fast this code is. It might only tell us how fast the computer is, not the code. So what can we do instead? Well, how about we take a closer look at our code and we see how many actions the code actually performs. And rather than using seconds as a time measurement, we'll use number of operations as a time measurement. So let's see. The first line of the code is setting s to 0. That seems like it might be just one operation. Then while well, we have this for loop, it's a little bit more complex, so let's skip it for now. We also have s is equal to s plus i. Okay. So depending on how you count, you might say that these are two operations, adding them two numbers together and also assigning the result to s. Finally, we return s, and this is again one operation. But now we have this for loop. So what happens in there? Well, initially we set i equal to zero. That's one operation. Then we must do something else, right? Because there's this 2n minus 1. So what actually happens there? Well, we increment i. Ah, incrementing something. That was two operations, right? i plus 1 to compute it, and then assigning the result to i. And then we also need to compare it to n minus 1, because so long as it's below that or equal to that, we should continue. But if it's larger than that, we should stop. Okay. And how often do we do this loop then? Well, we do it for the number 0, for the number 1, for 2, for 3, all the way up to n minus 1. So we do these operations n times. But hang on, that means that this s equals s plus i also happens n times. I see. So now let's try to add all of that together we get 5n plus 3 operations in total. And that's great, because no matter what hardware I run it on now, whether it's my old laptop or my new laptop or my N64, 
5n plus 3 operations for n equals 1000 gets me 5003 operations on any of these machines. On my laptop, my Switch, my Arduino, my Raspberry Pis, it does not matter. So I hope you see that reasoning about the number of operations of a piece of code is much more useful than reasoning about the number of seconds code takes to execute. With that in mind, in the next video, we'll try to formalize our notation for this. We'll see if we can abstract away even from these numbers, 5 and 3, or 5003 that we have over here. But for that, I'll see you in the next video.